So there's um, two questions that I'm not happy about in the Paper 2 Maths Higher Level 2021. I don't have the marking scheme, so I don't know what's going to happen. And I think what's interesting about these two questions is there's something in common with both of them. In this first question, question nine, you're told an airplane flies east from point A for two hours to B, uh, and then it has to, it reaches B and then it changes direction and then it travels, uh, as you can see there, towards C. Um, and it reaches point C. And um, there's all the information on the diagram. Fine, calculate how long it took to fly from B to C. Okay, so that's fine, you want the distance there, no problem. Part two, the average fuel consumption is 3.8 litres per second. Firstly, that's a little bit odd that it's per second, because anyways, it doesn't matter. And the fuel capacity of the plane is 100,000 litres. Okay. Show that the plane will be able to complete the journey from A to B to C and directly back to A at a speed of 420. Now, when I did this question, I interpreted that to mean A to B to C and then back C, B, A. But as others have pointed out, well, maybe it's A, B, C and then straight across to A like this. Why was I confused? Because the word back. You see, for me, when I read that, I read it as the plane flies A, B to C and directly back I understood back to mean like head back, reverse back, go back, you know, CBA. But then somebody pointed out, but the word directly, wouldn't that mean in a straight line from C to A? But again, I understood directly differently. I understood directly to mean when the plane reached C, it immediately turned around and head back. So it reached C, it turned around and went back B to A. And the reason for that is because the fuel is being consumed per second. So you don't want the plane idling here. So when I read this question, in my mind, I read it as it went from A to B to C and then immediately turned around and head back from C, B to A. But if they wanted to say directly from C to A, not heading back along through B, I would have thought they just would have said and directly to A not directly back to A. It's because of this back here, it's thrown me. So for me, there are two interpretations here. You could say A, B, C, A, or A, B, C, B, A. However, if I've shown that there's enough fuel to go A, B, C, and then C, B, A, then at the same time, I've also proven there's enough fuel to go A, B, C, A because that route is shorter. So if there's enough fuel for the longer route, A, B, C, then there's enough fuel, uh, if there's enough fuel for the longer route, A, B, C, and then C, B, A, then there's also must be enough fuel for A, B, C, and then A. So given the ambiguity that it could go either way, in my opinion, I think it would be better to, to show that there's enough fuel to go A, B, C, and then C, B, A. They could have prevented this confusion by having the capacity of the plane to be less than the uh, amount of fuel consumed by going ABC and CBA, or they could have just been a bit more explicit in, in saying here, they could have either said, and back to A, and in brackets they could say via B, or, or in brackets, straight line, you know. Um, I also think it's not really natural for me to say A, B, C, and then straight across to A, because why on earth would the plane go to C via B if it could have just traveled straight along here? As far as you know, there's an obstacle here. Now you might be saying, oh, you're reading too much into the question. Well, this is the problem with these contrived maths questions. They're not realistic. They're completely made up. And so you're expected to bring some level of reality to it and some level of thought, but not too much. So I really hate these questions. The second issue I had, uh, so before I go on, I kind of feel like this one's definitely 50-50. You could kind of read it either way. Uh, the next one here is with the homeowner problem. 
So the homeowner has a problem with the heating system. Uh, this is question, what number is this? Um, oh, it's the last question on the paper. So the homeowner has a problem with the heating system. Uh, a plumber has identified the problem as a faulty part. The homeowner knows that in 80% of cases, a repair of the part will fix the problem, and this repair will cost 70 euros. If the repair does not work, then a new part will have to be uh, bought costing 150 euros, and there will be an additional labor cost of 80 euros to replace the old part with the new part. The word here that's a problem is additional. You see, the first time I read this, I pictured two scenarios. The first scenario is that you pay to repair the part for 70 euros and it works, end of story. The second scenario is you pay the, uh, you, you get the part repaired uh, or try to, it doesn't work, and then you have to go on to buy a new part for 150 and have to pay 80 euros to install it. And for, I didn't consider that in that scenario you would still have to pay the 70 euros. You know, uh, because I I mean, what are we supposed to imagine that the plumber tried to fix it, it didn't work, they asked for 70 euros and then did the next thing, you know, because usually you only get billed once. And the other problem is um, the word additional. You see, when I first read this, I thought the word additional referred to the 150. That is, if the repair does not work, then the new part will have to be bought cost 150 and there will be an additional as in additional to the 150 labor cost of 80. That's what I thought. Now, even if the 70 has to pay, it has to be paid, because 80 is more than 70, that 70 euros could be included in the 80 euros already. Again, because usually the bill for labor at the end of a job is total, you know, and again, quite often, when something fails, you're not fully charged for it or, you know, you only get charged a little bit extra for the extra labor. You know, things like this work out. So it just to me, it seemed natural that the choices were either 70 or 150 plus 80. And maybe this 80 already included the 70 in it or part of it or whatever. You know, it never occurred to me that uh, it would be a two step approach where, it's 70 or it's 70 followed up by 150 and 80. Um, it's the problem with the word additional. Just like in the other question, the problem is with the word back. <laughs> Here the problem is with the word additional. And once again, this is a ridiculous contrived maths problem that's part of the new project math syllabus. And part of being a mathematician now, it would seem, is decoding contrived, ridiculous problems and, you know, pretending you're solving real world situations and so forth. So I, I dislike both of these. And, uh, and that's what I think about that.